Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at uh, some SOLIDWORKS installation failures and how to troubleshoot them. My name is Katherine Brooks and I'm an Applications Engineer for Triomex Solutions. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to review over this uh, hopefully very informative uh, video. So SOLIDWORKS install failed. What are you going to do? First thing you're going to want to do is um, find the install log. So I'm going to show you how to find your installation logs for a SOLIDWORKS failure. Once you find the logs, you've got to be able to read and decipher the information that exists inside of the install log. So I'm going to show you how to read the install logs. And then I'm going to show you a couple of common install failure codes and then how to repair or resolve the common failed install codes that uh, I'm going to present today as well as showing you some additional sources of information that you have access to. So everyone has probably had a perfectly smooth installation of SOLIDWORKS, but every once in a while you're going to get kind of that error message that shows up there, the installation failed. So to find the install logs, you can click on that in this directory right here, but if you click OK without saving the logs for support, let's go ahead and see how you can actually find them inside of your computer. So by default you can find the install logs for a Windows 7 or 8 computer <clears throat> by going to the C users username that would be your username app data roaming SOLIDWORKS installation logs and then you'll see the version you're in service pack. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's see. By going into the C drive we're going to go to Users. I've got a Windows 7 computer. I'm going to go into My Username. Now you'll notice that App Data is kind of grayed out here. Sometimes you might have to go under Organize, Folder and Search Options, go to the View tab, and then make sure that you have the option Show Hidden Files, Folders and Drives selected. Once you select this, you can click Apply and OK, and you should see the App Data folder. Inside of App Data, there's Roaming, and then you'll see SolidWorks, and then Installation Logs. I have 2014 SP2, you might have more, but whatever version you're in Service Pack you're trying to install will contain the installation logs that you need to look at. You'll notice here that there are two. Um, they do have sequential numbers 1, 2, if I had more it would be 3, 4, 5. The summary IM log, but you can also look at the date and the time of these installation logs when they were created to determine which one you're going to need. You're going to need the most recent version of this installation log. This uh, summary installation manager log has some information, but sometimes you'll also need to go into the other logs folder, and then you'll see these SLDIM logs. Again, look at the date and the time to make sure that you get the most recent one. I like to have word wrap turned on but it's really up to you um, if you want to have word wrap turned on or not so once you find the logs in the windows 7 or 8 also for windows xp you can find them under c documents and settings your username again application data solidworks installation logs version year and service pack once you find the installation logs, you've got to learn how to read them, how to find the information, to find the codes, so that you can determine how to fix the problem. By using Control F, which opens up a search window or a find window, you're going to search for two different um, syntaxes. The first is error code with no space, and then the second is return space value space 3. The, um, if you do come across either an error code or return value 3, the error will be located directly above the syntax. So let's go ahead and take a look at a, a summary installation manager log file from um, a failed install. So inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to search for, by using Control F, the error code with no space. Cannot find error code. Okay, so once I look for the first one and don't find anything, then I'm going to look for the, th the second return value 3 syntax. There I can see that there was actually an error return value 3 and directly above that error syntax will be what the problem is. Update browser data returned actual error code 1603. So um, look above what the syntax says to find the problem. Okay. 
So let's take a look at some common failure codes. 1620-1603 with the swbrowser.ldb and the VSTA host or the .NET framework. Each of these common failure codes can be found within the installation logs. Let's take a look at how to repair, resolve, and then eventually reinstall SOLIDWORKS successfully. Now for the 1620 error message, what you see underneath that is a, a couple of different SOLIDWORKS knowledge base articles that can potentially give you the information that you need to fix the problem. Now I am going to go over each of these uh, much more in depth in the upcoming um, slides, but I do just want to point out that inside of the customer portal or the VAR portal, you should be able to access the knowledge base if you have an active subscription with a SOLIDWORKS product serial number. Inside of the knowledge base, you can search for these different solution numbers or different articles. The first one for 1620 uh, is 029119, or you can also find additional information in 029354. If you ever come across an error message about the swbrowser.ldb, you can find additional information about uh, that error in the knowledge base uh, with article 059416. For the VSTA host, which is Visual Studio Tools for Applications, uh, the VSTA is a prereq, which is necessary for SOLIDWORKS to run and install properly. If you want to find out how to fix a VSTA error message or a VSTA host error message inside of the installation logs, you can find that in the knowledge base article 060573. And then last but not least for the common install errors that you might come across, the .NET framework is also a prerequisite for SOLIDWORKS to install and run properly. You can find information on how to repair that error uh, in 061563. So let's take a look and delve a little deeper into the error code 1620. If you ever run across this, it could mean a couple of different things. First thing would be insufficient permissions to directories. The directories would be, for example, your C drive in Windows installer, or C drive temp, or a local temp folder. So these different folders need to have um, uh, certain permissions in order to uh, be able to read and write and do the install properly. So you might want to get in touch with your IT professional and see if uh, you can get some additional permissions or they can assist you by running the install as an administrator. Another potential cause for the 1620 error message would be a CD or DVD ROM drive uh, malfunctioning. Uh, a good way to um, test or work around this particular issue would be to copy the contents of the install DVD onto a local disk and then install from there. So if you try and copy all of the files from the DVD onto a local disk such as your C drive or on your desktop and it fails for any reason, it's a good uh, indicator that you have a DVD um, drive malfunctioning. In that case, you would potentially be able to download the installation files from the customer portal website and install using those files. Um, another possible option for the 1620 error message would be a bad or scratched installation DVD. If that is the case, potentially, uh, what you can do is you can contact your value-added reseller and ask them to send you a new copy of the installation DVD. Or you can access the downloads from the customer portal website as well. Let's look at the swbrowser.ldb. So inside of the installation logs, uh, when we found the error message regarding the um, 1603 update browser, it actually tells you that the swbrowser.ldb uh, SW file will be found within potentially um, a local drive such as the C drive or it could be in a network drive but either way it's going to tell you where this database uh, file is located so you're going to need to go and find that folder location so for example if I open up my C drive 
I have the SOLIDWORKS Data Toolbox folder with a 2014 at the end of it. And inside here we have Lang in English and then we have the SWBrowser.mdb. So let's take a moment to talk about what the difference is between the LDB and the MDB. The LDB file is a locking database file. It is supposed to protect the MDB file, which is the master database file. Uh, when someone accesses the toolbox and starts modifying, um, maybe uh, putting in part numbers or changing descriptions, the LDB file is supposed to appear. It should be about one kilobyte large. Um, and it basically protects the master database. Sometimes when you close out of SOLIDWORKS and close out of the toolbox, that LDB file is left lingering within that folder location um, specified in the installation log file. Uh, it shouldn't be there after you are done with uh, using and modifying the toolbox. So once you find the folder location, you're going to first uh, going to want to ensure that no one is using the toolbox. This is especially important for network toolboxes. If someone is using the toolbox, then that LDB file should be there and you will have to wait until uh, the individual who is using the toolbox finishes with their activities. If no one is using the toolbox or if this is a local toolbox and you are the only individual who should be using it, you can go ahead and delete the swbrowser.ldb file. Note, do not delete the swbrowser.mdb file. The MDB file is your master database. It contains all of the information about your toolbox parts. So if you delete the MDB file, you will essentially delete all of the information about the toolbox, which could be extremely detrimental if you have any user-defined uh, part numbers or descriptions inside of that MDB file. You will lose all that information. So again, feel free, after ensuring no one is using the toolbox, you can delete the swbrowser.ldb file, locking database file. Do not delete the MDB file. Okay, let's talk about the VSTA or the VSTA host, Visual Studio Tools for Applications. If you ever come across this error message inside of the installation log, the first thing you're going to want to do is uninstall the existing VSTA. That can be done by going into your Start Control Panel Programs and Features for Windows 7 or 8 and finding the VSTA listed there or the Visual Studio Tools for Applications listed there and uninstalling. After you're done uninstalling the VSTA, you're going to want to rename the registry keys. Please note that going into the registry keys is something that really should only be handled by someone who is very familiar with computers. So you might want to contact your IT professional or you can contact your local value-added reseller uh, and get in touch with their technical support representatives for assistance with this. If you feel comfortable with renaming registry keys, feel free to proceed. So if you have a 64-bit computer, you're going to want to go under HKEY Local Machine Software WOW 6432 Node Microsoft and you're going to rename VSTA Host. You're also going to rename VSTA Host Config. If you've got a 32-bit computer, it's a little bit different. It's going to be HKEY Local Machine Software Microsoft and you're going to rename VSTA Host and you're also going to rename VSTA Host Config. After you're done renaming those registry keys, you're going to want to reinstall the VSTA. That can be found inside of the installation files for SOLIDWORKS under the prereqs folder under a folder called VSTA. Let's talk about the .NET framework. So if you ever come across a .NET framework error message inside of the installation logs, the first thing you're going to want to try and do is download and run the admin repair tool. Um, the admin repair tool, if you click on this uh, little link here, if you follow that link, will take you to the download center for Microsoft and you can simply download the Microsoft.NET Framework repair tool. After you download it, you're just going to want to run through the repair. Um, if the repair tool 
does not fix the problem and you still come across a, an error message about the .NET Framework in your second attempt to install SOLIDWORKS in the installation logs, you can always try to uninstall and reinstall. Now when it comes to uninstalling and reinstalling, there's a couple of different things I want to point out. I'm going to go to the Start Control Panel. We're going to go to the Programs and Features. And there's two different sections that you need to access for Windows 7 or Windows 8. First thing you're going to want to do is click on the Turn Windows Features On or Off. Inside of the Windows Features, there is a Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5. To quote unquote uninstall this, you simply uncheck the box and click OK. Wait for it to refresh and what it'll do is it'll turn off the .NET Framework 3.5. Once it's finished, you're going to go back into the Windows and Features um, on or off section, click it so that it becomes uh, selected again, and then click OK for it to reinstall or turn the feature back on. So that's the .NET Framework 3.5, but as you can see, I also have a .NET Framework 4, Client Profile and Extended. After going through and turning on uh, I'm sorry, turning off and then back on the 3.5, you're going to want to uninstall the .NET Framework 4, both the extended and the client profile. After uninstalling, you should be able to find uh, the installation files for the .NET Framework once again within the SOLIDWORKS installation files in a folder called Prereqs in a folder called .NET Framework. So we've talked about how to repair some common installation problems, but if you need some additional resources after you've gone through and seen the information here, you can always find information at the customer portal if you have a valid uh, serial number for any SOLIDWORKS product that is on subscription. Um, by going to customerportal.solidworks.com. If you're a value-added reseller, you can also access the VAR portal at varportal.solidworks.com. So, for the customer portal, as long as you have a valid subscription, you should be able to log in and access the knowledge base right here. So inside the knowledge base is where you're going to be able to find information about those codes shown earlier uh, in this presentation. You can also find my.solidworks uh, for the SOLIDWORKS forums and look there for any additional information from other users or other technical support representatives who may have posted information on different error codes. And then last but not least, you can always contact your local value-added reseller for their technical support team. Uh, if you are a Trimec uh, customer, you can contact our technical support team by calling 888-TRIMEC and asking for a technical support representative, at which point you will be uh, in contact with a live representative. Last but not least, I uh, just want to thank you very much for taking some time out of your day to review over some information on how to troubleshoot SOLIDWORKS installation failure codes. Uh, just keep in mind that after you've gone through and repaired using the information here, you would simply just try and reinstall SOLIDWORKS. If you want to get in touch with me, my email address is listed there. Or if you are uh, interested in trying to contact Trimec um, to look at the different services we provide, please feel free to contact us at 888-TRIMEC. Thank you very much.